Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is Janeline Palma, your Certified Scrum Master. In this lesson, we will talk about what is Scrum. So let's start! Before we proceed to the definition of Scrum, let's talk about first where Scrum word came from. Do you have any idea? So I'll give you a clue. Just watch this short video. So do you already have an idea? So the word scrum comes from the word scrummage. This is the term used in the sport of rugby. The players stand close together with their heads interlocked. In this formation, they move as one. So when one person makes a step, all the others must take a step as well. So same in software development. Team members have to work as one unit to achieve the goal. So now that you know where the word Scrum came from, let's now proceed to the history of Scrum. So in 1986, the name Scrum appears in a paper by management experts Hirotaka Takochi and Ikujiro Nanaka called the New New Product Development Team. So relating to rugby, stressing team collaboration for project success. And then in 1995, Jeff Sutherland and Ken Swaber come up with process which they presented to the OPSLA conference in Austin, Texas. So OPSLA means object-oriented programming systems, languages, and application. And then in 2001, Sutherland and Swaber and 15 other software development leaders created the Manifesto for Agile Software Development shortly afterwards, the Agile Alliance was founded and the first book of Scrum, Agile Software Development with Scrum is published. And then in 2002, the Scrum Alliance is founded by Swaber and adds certification arm to the organization with certified Scrum Master pro programs. And then in 2006, Sutherland creates Scrum Incorporated and continues to teach the certified Scrum courses. And then in 2009, Swaber leaves the Scrum Alliance to start up Scrum Org, which offers the professional Scrum series. And then lastly, in 2010, this is the first publication of the Scrum Guide. So Scrum Guide is free. You can check it out in scrum.org website. I'll put the link in the description down below. So there's a new version released last year, November 2020. So if you're planning to take the certification and to be a certified professional Scrum Master, product owner, or developers, you have to review that Scrum Guide thoroughly. Because um, most of the questions are based in the Scrum Guide. So now that you know the history of Scrum, let's now proceed to the definition of Scrum. So Scrum is a lightweight framework. So when you hear the word framework, what comes to your mind? So framework is a basic structure to serve as a support or guide for building something. So that helps people, teams, and organizations generate value through adaptive solutions for complex problems. So like in a software development company, when we are building a product, product means iOS app, Android app or a website, much better if we are using a guide or framework like Scrum to have a quicker release of usable product to users and customers and so on. So sample of that is like in the span of two weeks sprint, you can already see a usable product. So we will talk about it later on. Actually, there are so many benefits of Scrum. So that's the reason why Scrum is one of the most popular Agile framework in use today. 
So there are three words that best describe Scrum. So Scrum is simple, lightweight, and difficult to master. So now that we know the definition of Scrum, let's now talk about the Scrum theory. So Scrum is founded on empirical process control theory or empiricism. So what is empiricism? So this is the knowledge comes from experience, making decisions based on what is known. So there are three pillars of empirical process control. So the first one is transparency. So transparency, in order for team members to feel responsible for the overall result, they need to know the essentials of the process and be regularly informed. So sample of that is like in the DSM or daily stand-up meeting, everyone in the team must update the progress of their task and their blockers or impediments. So for everyone to know what's going on on their task. And then the next pillar is inspection. So time checks on the progress toward the sprint goal to detect undesirable variances. So sample here is you can check the scrum board to see the progress of the team. Are they delayed because the team had a blocker or the team is still on track? So, and the last pillar is adaptation. So adjusting a process as soon as possible to minimize any further deviation or issues. So sample here, at the end of the sprint, like in retro, the team identifies the things that didn't go well. So on the next sprint, they will start doing the solution to their problem so that it will not happen again. So that's the three pillars of empiricism, transparency, inspection, and adaptation. So now that you know the Scrum theory, let's now proceed to Scrum values. So we have five Scrum values. So first one is courage. So Scrum team members should have courage to do the right thing and work on top problems. So in Scrum, there are so many sudden changes. So that's the reality of Agile. So you just need to adapt and challenge yourself to go beyond your capabilities. So everyone in the team could be flexible. So when one is absent, someone will cover up his, her task. And then the next one is focus. So everyone in the team should focus on the work of the sprint and the goals of the Scrum team. So after planning, you identified your sprint goal so team should be focused in achieving that sprint goal. And then the third one is commitment. So people personally commit to achieving the goals of the Scrum team. So sample, you have committed user stories for the sprint. So everyone in the team is accountable to complete that at the end of the sprint. So actually, all the Scrum team is accountable the PO, the Scrum Master, and then the development team. And then the fourth one is respect. So Scrum teams should respect each other to be capable independent people. So this is self-explanatory. So even not in Scrum, you should respect everyone for them to respect you also. And then last Scrum value is openness. So the Scrum team and its stakeholders agreed to be open about all the work and the challenges with the performing the work. So everyone in the team should be transparent and everyone should be aware of what is happening during the sprint. So you should be open to that. So that's the five Scrum values. Courage, focus, commitment, respect, and openness. So that's all for lesson one. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope to see you on my next video. Bye-bye.